Ships will never stop being added to Star Citizen. They are how the game is funded, yes, but they also drive gameplay. And in this latest update on what ships are in development for the game, many bring gameplay and designs from the backlog into players' hands. Ground vehicles, capital ships, crowd favorites, entirely unique designs, and some surprise unannounced ships. There's a lot in development right now. So like always, I'm gonna give you a look at the basics surrounding each, what they're used for, and when we might see them. And if you want more of these ship updates every six months, consider subscribing here. Thank you for coming to my Tomato Talk. The Tumbral Storm is a vehicle I think we could see within a week of this video going live, if it ships with Alpha 321. I like how this vehicle was introduced. It was revealed basically halfway through its work cycle already. This will be the second tank added to the game, but it takes a different role. Sharing a tread base, it fits in the same areas as the larger Nova, but it comes in much shorter, giving it a lower profile. It also is much faster, taking the role of a quick strike vehicle, kind of like a scout, as opposed to the heavy weapon cavalry. This one won't have much gameplay available to it unless we see an increase in meaningful ground targets sometime soon, but it will flesh out the selection of ground vehicles we have. It'll be a one-person vehicle with weapon racks and exterior accessible components, but no interior. And there's really not much else to say. Something like this will be great in Squadron 42, I'm sure, and for org battles, but CIG has yet to prove they can make engaging content that requires ground vehicles. This tank on its own won't change that, but it should be good fun to play with the new tank battle modes in Arena Commander. This series of ships is a fun one. The Spirit series is a triplet of transport-focused medium-sized one to two-person ships made up of a bomber, a VIP transport, and a general-purpose hauler. This ship comes from a company that also makes the Hercules, the Jupiter, and the Ares. So Spirit is an exact match in name, but it does make sense. It is a smaller version of the A2, M2, and C2 series we see from the Hercules line of ships. The A1 bomber is actually already showing up in the 3.21 PTU, so expect to see it in live servers within days of this video. It introduces size 5 bombs, offering a more palatable explosive air-to-ground weapon in larger numbers than the bigger A2. Much like the Storm, this vehicle does not actually have a lot of gameplay tailor-made for it, so the actual ownership of it in the short term may be a bit underwhelming, but we have seen some signs of possible ground-based bombing missions coming up soon. The cargo-focused C-1 hauler will have its gameplay, and it should be launching shortly after the A-1, likely in November. This ship may be my daily driver, and from what I've seen in comments and chat, many others are considering the possibility as well. With 48 SCU at 46 meters long and 43 meters wide, it has a pretty large footprint for its capacity, essentially being a hallway with large wings attached, larger than its main competitor, the Cutlass Black, and coming in with less SCU than another competitor, the Freelancer but that might not be enough to deter players from the good looks. Seriously, did we get the Turians and Star Citizen here briefly? Finally, the passenger-focused E1 is a long way off waiting for the personnel transportation career path to form. It also is a bit more complex in design, hosting two decks instead of just one, so it could take longer for them to get this finished. The gameplay for this passenger-focused ship has been worked on, but with AI performing so poorly in the current server architecture, it has not been added to the game. Post server meshing, it's possible the game is in a state in which the passenger transport career and ships like the E1 are plausible, but we're going to have to wait a little while to see. The Polaris is a big crowd favorite. I'm actually not fully sure why. Avenger 1 did make the case for it in a recent podcast episode we had with Zero State about combat in the game, but I mainly see it as a very good-looking space Dorito with oversized torpedoes. Seriously, this 6-plus person Corvette is a capital-class ship with 216 SCU of storage and 28 size 10 torpedoes. It's a monster. It'll likely be incredibly expensive and difficult to use effectively, but it should offer a unique capital combat strike boat experience. That experience is the big question, though. Every other ship on this list is feasible just due to the fact that they aren't entirely the first of their kind. 
But the Polaris will be the first seriously made capital ship with engineering gameplay, with capital ship busting torpedoes, with a large crew size. The gameplay needed for this ship is being designed as the ship is built, and it's a part of Star Citizen that nobody has really gotten to experience yet. So while this ship and the concept of it is awesome, we'll have to see over the next year as it's being built what CIG is doing to build a game that actually needs it. I'll keep you updated on the progress of this one, but I wouldn't expect it in game for at least a year, despite what the progress tracker says. I believe this one is still in the white box phase as per recent monthly report, and I think we might see a small update on it at CitizenCon. If not then, then definitely at IAE. The Santok Yai is an exciting ship because it offers a similar perk to the Polaris at a much smaller size. It's a very unique ship. It is one of two Xi'an ships in the game. The Xi'an are an alien race known for their technological ability to control gravity, and this really shows in their designs. Omnidirectional thrusters, floating controls, anti-gravity walkways, the works. You can see this in influence in the Mirai and Misk ships due to a technological partnership that the Misk brand of ships have with the Xi'an species. Now, even though the car to all exists, the company making Star Citizen has changed a lot since it was made. The textures, lighting, and details in general are all noticeably better. With this improvement and a style and design that no other ship replicates, it'll be great to see the new updated Santok Yai in-game. And honestly, from what we've seen so far, I'm really happy with seeing how well the concepts from all the way back in 2017 have translated over to the minute details of these new ships from the same alien species. But we still don't know how this medium fighter will match up in a fight. At 24 meters by 24 meters, it's not small, but it's also not huge. It's meant to be able to move in any direction very quickly due to thrusters, and it's going to have four size three weapons. So you're going to want to keep an eye on this thing in a fight. But I think we'll still have to wait another month until November before we can see it in game. The RSI Apollo is another fairly old concept from 2018. It is a medically focused ship with access to high-end beds that can act as respawn points and healing stations. These beds can be configured in any number of ways as this ship acts as more of a mobile clinic rather than just an ambulance like the Cutlass Red. This is the kind of ship that somebody would expect to sit out in a star system and offer public respawning services to those in need nearby. There are two variants, and it is confirmed to be in the white box stage at this moment, so we can expect to see a lot of this ship in progress throughout 2024, and it's likely not to come until probably the third quarter or later next year. The big question I have regarding this ship is whether the medical gameplay sees an update when this thing comes out, and whether we see drones. One of the only reasons this ship wasn't already in game is a lack of drone gameplay, and since the underlying tech for drones is needed for Squadron 42, a game that seems to be approaching completion, maybe we could see the tech used in the Apollo in 2024. In addition, medical gameplay is pretty basic right now. While it got the job done back in 3.15 when the game was more basic, our lives are lasting longer, the injury system needs to be deeper, and there needs to be more for a dedicated medical person to do on their ship. So we're getting around the time that I would expect to hear about an update and I hope some of that is touched on as the Apollo goes through development. Either way, this ship will provide a much more sustainable spawn point for groups at the least, and hopefully a location for individuals willing to pay their owners out in the frontier. The G-12 is Origin's answer to the Cyclone with a little bit of Ursa thrown in. While it maintains the buggy form factor, it houses a closed cockpit for protection against the elements and comes with two SCU of storage on the standard model, but that closed canopy is the real seller. As life support becomes more valuable, that'll mean a lot compared to the Cyclone. In addition, the base variant has a small turret, mainly meant as a deterrent. The other variants include a racing model that lacks armor but carries an EMP, some fun races, and the combat model, which contains heavier armor and an 8-missile defense system. 
We don't know too much else about these vehicles, as ground vehicles like this tend to not have many gameplay considerations, so the launch of the vehicle should be pretty straightforward. And based on recent messaging surrounding this vehicle in monthly reports and on ISC, I expect to see this sometime mid next year. The X1 is another origin counterpart to another in-game vehicle. This time, the competitor to the Nox, the hovercraft coming from Aopoa, the company that made the Santok Yai. This vehicle is actually meant to be paired with the 400i, so many an eyebrow were lifted when the bigger ship released without its best friend a couple years ago. At long last, the final hover bike that we know of has entered development, per the little oopsie earlier this year. Finished the Santok Yai white box, and I think we're moving on to the X1 after that, yeah? So... Hopefully that comes out this year. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, I don't know. Maybe it's, it's, it's up in the air, we'll see. And as of the recent sprint report catch up, the vehicle is still in the white box stage. What we see here are baked in lighting concepts to mock up the final model, but I think it's looking pretty good. It'll still likely be several months before the X1 makes it into the game as well though. And while hovercrafts and ground vehicles have seen improvements over the years, they still just don't meet the performance quality bar we should expect from a game of this caliber. I hope further improvements to the server health affects the physics simulation in a good way, because I'd hate to see Squadron 42 lacking good ground vehicle gameplay. Keep an eye out for this one, and hopefully some better control over hovercrafts sometime next year. For a ship a little closer to release, the Argo SRV is a good one to finish on, as it's the only ship in the game that does what it does. This is a tugboat. Literally. This ship is meant to grab other ships, either solo or in groups depending on the size of the ship, and move them wherever they need to go. Away from space stations, into a repair dock, out of the way of another ship, etc. There will be a lot of useful scenarios in which this ship will shine, even in the current game, but the real selling point will be the missions that can accompany it. Towing wreckage and abandoned ships away from space stations, in my opinion, should be the number one priority mission given the problem global persistence on all things has caused. Missions that utilize the unique features of this ship in ways that matter will surely lend a lot of credit to this style of gameplay. And it goes beyond ships too. The tractor beams in-game will function with any interactable object. Ships and derelicts, of course, but also cargo and mineable asteroids. So players can start to get very creative with this one. I suspect we may see this by the end of the year with its tentative prediction already made for the 3.21 branch. And while this video is only about the ship, there are a lot of complications to consider regarding tractor beams that you can learn more about in my video linked below and up in the corner. And then there were the ever-present question marks, the unannounced or new ships that can't yet be named. Some people don't like the mystery that sometimes comes with the ships in development for various reasons, but there's always something going on behind the scenes. Right now, we know one variant in production is the Cutter Scout, which seemed to be completed in September per the monthly report and has actually been seen in the game this week. It's a small exploration-focused variant from the starter bucket from Drake, which means it contains a purpose-built scanner which can more efficiently find resources whenever scanning gets another pass, and a larger cargo bay that I can believe can fit a rock mining vehicle, making it the smallest ship to do so. I haven't confirmed that yet, but the possibility is there. Many believe there is another variant of the same ship that may be revealed at some point, but as of the time of writing, I know nothing. Another ship saw work in August and progressed in big ways in September, giving us hints of beds and a set of variants lining up pretty well with recent speculation of the Zeus MK2 from RSI. While this ship has been discussed in less official terms, it is likely to be revealed soon well into development. It is a successor to the first ship in-game lore to ever have a quantum drive, though that does not mean it will look or function the same. It is likely to be another mid-size one to two person ship, so I'm happy to see it. And even after all this, there are still a few unannounced ships that have popped up in monthly reports over the last few months that went suspiciously quiet recently. So keep an eye out for a possible straight to flyable unannounced ship either at CitizenCon or at IAE in November. We also have confirmation that work will soon begin on the Gatak Raylan, which will be interesting to see in game. And I would keep an eye out for the Expanse or possibly another refining focus ship. Heading into Pyro, refueling is going to be important. With it eventually, so will refining. 
And while it might not be around the corner, we know the gameplay is being worked on, per other monthly reports. If you want to keep up with when we'll see The Expanse, the Polaris, the Spirit C1, or any other ship I've mentioned here today, consider subscribing to the channel for weekly videos, live streams most days, and fun tomato facts. You can also check out my second channel, Space Tomato 2, for my longer form deep dive videos, news drops, and my two podcasts. My most recent episode had Avenger 1 and Zero State, two combat pilots and content creators on board, to discuss the F8 Lightning, Master Modes, and how the future of combat in Star Citizen is looking. But there are also other episodes with Board Gamer, Morphologist, InfoRunners, Astropub, and other community members you may have seen on YouTube. But if you're just into videos, I appreciate you coming to this one. I hope you learned something new here, and I'll catch you in the next.